so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to outline some of the changes that we introduced to the GP training as we did last year by health education and the thing, to try and stimulate more applicants. And I'll also talk about in a bit more detail about the Welsh Government initiatives. And then Tash will give you an update on what's happened this year in the ground work. We have we obviously rejected all the ground and the efforts so we can talk about the ground figures. I always think we can try and put the gem on trying to tell us exactly how many infected people are because it changes every minute. But um, anyway, we've uh, sorry, I'll have to do this because it's not coming up on the screen. Okay, so last year, um, Health Education England introduced what's called the Single Transferable Score. So um, that means that applicants for GP training, they put in one application, and they can actually, um, they choose by scheme, not by deanery. So previously, they used to rank Wales as well by deanery, then KSS. This from last year, they can actually rank, say, Wrexham, first by scheme, Chester, second choice, Bristol, third. And that's, we've seen that have quite a positive impact on places on the border. And um, Wrexham can also kind of keep their options open about whether they want to be in AD or Wales. Um, they, candidates attend the nearest selection centre to where they live, they're living. So, they're not in previous week, if they put Wales as their first choice deanery, they came to the Wales Selection Centre regardless of where they were located at that time. That's changed, but I think this year we had about 70% of the um, candidates that came to our Selection Centre had put a Welsh scheme first. Um, all the offers are arranged by the NRO, the application <coughs> is made, we, well, we, not me, cash, <laughs> long list. And then we can't actually see any information about anyone that's we attach long lists of people that have put a well scheme first and then all the information is closed to us. We can't actually go back and look at them again. So it's a bit frustrating, but you know, I guess it's there. The NRO organise all the offers. We, we can just sort of we still don't know the details of anyone that's come onto the Welsh scheme. Um, the last year they also introduced non-statutory deferrals. So People could take could elect to take up to twelve months deferral from their start date. That's been quite popular. I didn't come and look at it later on. <coughs> um, it's quite difficult to manage uh, because we have to keep in constant contact with the people that defer to check they want to come back. And two people that said they defer last year have actually decided not to come back. So you know that it's I and mean, it's it does make things quite complicated. Um, there's also something called step on step off, which allows trainees after they've been in training for six months to actually come off the programme. Not in as a voucher program, it comes in quite a different from the voucher program. We haven't actually had anyone do that. We think it's because they think the referral is step on step off. And to be honest, I think we probably collapsed a bit too. Because <laughs> all the deferrals with the step on and step off is, would all become quite complicated. Um, Last year as well, the um, NRO introduced what's called the bypass score. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with what happens in GP recruitment. It's in three parts application, then stage two, uh, situational judgment and clinical problem solving test, which is put online, and then stage three selection centre, which is several stations. Um, just to pass it together. Now, the bypass score allows anybody who scored. 575 or more in stage two tests, they didn't have to attend stage three, and um, they reject offers their first choice scheme. That last year, I think we had eight. Yeah, we had eight. We had eight candidates come through on the bypass score. We've heard rumours this year that we've got 25 coming through on that. Again, we don't know. Um, we've also got the ATCF, so that allows candidates. Who've done OG, uh, the specialty training and OG fees, then the specialty, not six months of specialty training. Again, we had, we sort of had about ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so that's proven quite popular as well. And this year, for the first time, we've introduced Global Health Fellowship Posts, which allowed, in England, they've been doing that in the community for quite a long time. 
but we need to be prepared to, and it allows uh, GP training to take 12 months out of their training between SP2 and SP3 <coughs> to go and work in South Africa. So we advertise six of those clubs this year, but the moment we fill two and two. Um, so this year we've also got the new Welsh Government initiative, so two initiatives, universal incentive and the time incentive, what most people want to say in that. So the universal incentive, that allows payment of one sitting of the clinical skills assessment exam and one sitting of the applied knowledge test as part of the N um, assessments. Now that's open to all GP trainees who start their first GP <coughs> training post this year. We, funny enough, even though it's a great opportunity, it's not happening anywhere else. We haven't had no. anybody really. It doesn't seem to have stimulated interest. I guess because they're not going to sit in it. The earliest they could be in it is in 18, 20, 18, 20, 19. So it's sort of a bit, I'm sure it would be popular when they realise that they're not going to shell out £2,000. Um, they don't, if they fail their first year, they don't have to pay it. And we're working with the RCGP <coughs> trying to make the payment direct to the RCGP rather than the reimbursement because that would be good practice as well. So, mm -hmm. um, so I think that's you know, a great sort of demonstration of the Welsh Government's commitment to GP training. Now, the targeted incentive it applies to these five training schemes and it's in two parts. So, GP trainees started their first GP training post, and I've totally saying that tortuous ways, but we've had people who have maybe started last year, but then not actually, they went straight on that leave, but well actually, you know, they've done maybe two months and then they're starting this year. There are some people that won't be eligible. So if you first GP training post in any of those schemes in 2017, February or August, and they'll get um, £10,000 less tax for their first month of pay. They'll then get £10,000 less tax once they get their CCT. If they finish their training, they've got training to do, and then they want to just go from waiting to partnership, they can do that for up to six months, but then they need to get a substantive post with a partner, salary doctor, working in a back and on a contract in a house centre in one of the targeted areas uh, up to six months after they got their CCT. So <coughs> still working out the logistics of how that will work because obviously tracking those doctors is going to be quite complicated. Um, and then the incentive is also open to doctors who commit to go into palace training practice. Now we don't have a palace training scheme, but we've got some practices in palace that match the Wrexham scheme, which is part of the incentive. But there's also some palace practices, a couple are attached to the Gwent scheme, and there's also one attached to the Mead scheme. So with those trainees, they will get, if they go to one of those practices in palace, they will get the 10K at the start of their SP3 year, because of otherwise, could be potential for them to, you know, life gets in the way and sometimes you might, you know, they might not end up actually going to the practice. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but there's probably more detail in the internet. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to hand over to Tash now. I, just the other thing I'd say is on referrals, <coughs> we, we have people, we don't know whether the Welsh Government Incentive is going to continue next year. We have people asking about referrals, and if we refer this year, we won't be eligible next year. At the moment, we're having to say we don't, well, no, because we don't know whether the incentives are continuing, but it doesn't appear to have had much impact on people are still referring. So it's kind of, you know, for some people, it's not about the money, I think. You know, it's a sort of, it's maybe made some people who would have applied to Carmarthen apply to Pembrokeshire, but it's not necessarily <coughs> always about the money. I think people say they want to, to have 12 months off to go to Australia, but know they've got the GP training post. Maybe for some people, that's more important. Anyway, I'll hand over to Tash. It's just, yeah. Uh, so we've movement uh, so far. Uh, we're advertising 136 vacancies. 
um, which includes six GHS posts uh, for all good staff. Um, so that was our Brian Wood Section Centre, uh, which we held recently um, last month actually for all good starters. We held it in the Marriott in Cardiff. Um, our next round then is round one we advert. Um, the selection said we're not actually holding it ourselves, we're actually um, jumped onto another deanery to hold uh, that selection centre. I think it's Gloucester, I think mm -hmm. that we're going to be picking back on. Um, members for that we don't actually know yet um, until this round is finished. Um, <clears throat> they again start in August 2017. Uh, the third round of selection is a round called round two, um, which will be held sometime in September, October. Dates haven't yet been confirmed, and therefore February 2018 starters. Um, the preparation uh, in round two, again, whether we hold this or whether we don't, is dependent on the numbers that we fill up. Round one, sorry, <coughs> and round one, we have the <coughs> um, So, this is our figures um, for the round one that we've just um, had now. Uh, the column on the far left, um, beginning 6 8 16, these are the numbers that we totally that we advertise all together, so that um, totals up to 136. The number in the brackets um, is the numbers that I long listed um, for uh, that had Wales as their first choice, and um, so that actually totals up to 180. So we had more um, putting Wales as their first choice as vacancies advertised. The one on the far right, um, these are the acceptances that we've had so far, um, which is 114. But at the moment, as Mary mentioned. Um, we've still got the upgrading process as well, which is happening um, on the 16th of March. Um, so once that finishes, um, which is Thursday, we should know which scheme um, they've been allocated. As this number on the far right could change depending on if they get upgraded to a different area. Um, and obviously some caveats as well, round one. Again, we don't know the number of deferrals that we've got. I've had sort of roughly about sort of 10 uh, people inquire about it, but again, um, it depends on whether they want to um, want to defer or not. Um, ATCF is short and steam. Again, we don't know how many replied to receive their applications. Bypass score, as Mary mentioned, we had um, sort of some information that we had about 25, but again, that could be, you know, they could go to a different deanery. Um, the percentage of candidates got their first, second choice. Again, we don't know this, unfortunately. Last year for round one, um, it was about 85% that got their first choice, and it was quite a high percentage that got their second as well. Um, however, 10 candidates as well, as Mary mentioned, they deferred from last year, and they will be joining us and starting again in this August as well. So on that 114 accepted, we've got another 10 as well that are coming back to us in August 17. Any questions?